hey everyone welcome back to the channel uh as always likes comments and subscriptions would be great uh I, i'm not sure why this is happening but for some reason i am only sleeping like three hours per night so you know that's just absolutely wonderful um yeah and without further ado let's jump right into it as i, I mean you know what's coming. The cryptocurrency space is never not ridiculous. There's always some weird kind of stuff going on. For those of you who aren't looking at your screen, it says Bitcoin stagnates below $17,000 as extreme fear returns to crypto. There are a couple of metrics. There are a couple of charts you can look at to see uh, when people are in panic mode, when people are in greedy mode, when people are in selling mode. Or when people are trying to accumulate. We have tons and tons of metrics because crypto has been around for just about that amount of time. For some reason, we are currently at the point where, um, by all means, in the other charts, Bitcoin should have actually moved up in price by now. But for some reason, it is staying below $17,000. Uh, we spoke about, I think, a day or two ago that it, sh it, it, it neared or crossed the golden cross or something like that, which is usually the indicator that prices are beginning to move back up. This was also seen a couple of weeks ago as we saw um, the people who were mining crypto turning on their machines, a brand new hash rate. All indications said we should have moved a lot higher, and by my account, we should be well above at least $25,000. However, nope, that's not been the case. It says Bitcoin price dump incoming question mark on chain data reveals bottom. This website actually lies. They don't even talk about where the bottom actually is. It's their indication of how expensive it is to mine an actual Bitcoin and how much they believe the people who are mining Bitcoin uh, may stay in the game depending on how low its price goes. It says Bitcoin's price can fall to its delta price of $12,800 due to mining bankruptcy risk and liquidation of long positions by traders. So the idea generally is if it costs $12,000 to mine an entire Bitcoin worth of electricity and Bitcoin's at $20,000, you're going to pay that $12,000 to make the $20,000. However, if Bitcoin's price falls down to $12,000, and it costs twelve thousand eight hundred to mine a Bitcoin. You're going to start unplugging your machines, which is what we are seeing right now by people who are mining Bitcoin around the world who have more expensive electricity. It's very, very weird what's happening in the space. Um, I don't know when this happened, the exact moment, how we got here, but Bitcoin and Ethereum or any other coin actually moving on their own seems to be completely long gone. We are completely tied neck and neck with the stock market as we've been going over over the course of this year. But, you know, it's still a literal catastrophe that this is happening. It says Ethereum's price to fall to $922 by the 10th of December. This was predicted by a cryptocurrency price website called Coin Codex. Ethereum, by all metrics as well, should have also moved back up, not only by the uh, deflation rate, but also what's the other one? Uh, the issuance rate has also dropped dramatically. The usage on the network, the amount of things still being built on top of it. You name it, we should be a lot higher in price. Um, if we fall down to a $922 Ether in the next two days, that means a lot of other altcoins are also going to be collapsing as well. There's a, you'll see it in a, in a, in a couple of seconds. There's a lot of really grandiose catastrophic news that's been uh being thrown around the world right now um in relatively unsurprising news because this this always leads me to believe this is my corner of the world about the levels of manipulation within the market it, it's always the same it's always the exact same thing and when i tell you what's going on uh, maybe it'll cause the little light bulb to go over someone's head as well. It says some of Ethereum's largest investors have been aggressively accumulating Ethereum at a time in which its price has started recovering from the crash the crypto space endured after the collapse of FTX. According to data from on-chain analytics firm Santiment, 
Ethereum shark and whale addresses, those holding between 100 and 1 million Ether, now own two-thirds. They now own more than 66% of all the Ether on the planet. After adding 2.1% more over the last two days. Tying into, um, I don't know, it, it, it's also, I find it kind of sad. I, I'm not sure if anyone else is on the same mental level. Not that I'm genius. It's more of a, cryptocurrencies are meant for normal people. Cryptocurrencies are supposed to be held by the people around the world who don't have bank accounts, who aren't a part of the banking system, who have been shunned or pushed away from it because of ye hundreds of years of segregation and, and ridiculous policies that we've seen over the course of decades, centuries, and through, you know, around 6 billion people. Like, this is kind of, for those of you who don't know, there are billions, as with a B, of people on the planet who don't have bank accounts. Why? Because banks don't like poor people. That part we knew, but there's parts of the world where they actively refuse to go, and these people do not. So the point is, cryptocurrencies are for them. That's why they were created, to get us away from the old system, to bring us into a, a, a new era. Uh, but, and here's the gigantic but, um, every single time that a, uh, and I air quotes here, catastrophic event like FTX happens, I try to warn people, I'm, my, my channel's uh, reach only goes so far. I, I still see the exact same thing with the other channels and the other uh, thumbnails with them holding their faces and them looking sad and them telling you to pump this coin and all the other nonsense. And the, the amount of views they get sometimes, and I, I find it so ridiculous that people don't actually want news. I, for some reason, stupidly thought years ago, uh, that this channel would do well simply because people wanted actual information as to what was going on in the cryptocurrency space, but people just want hype. I think it's just the way that it is. I've, I've, I've come to terms with it. Um, when we get an event similar to FTX, as they keep happening over and over and have been happening for a number of years, everyone's constantly told to panic, to fear. You know, Ethereum's price is going less than a thousand. Time to panic, time to sell. And then people sell their coins, and then we get news for weeks after that all these coins have been accumulated by whales, by the richest people on the planet, who've been waiting and who have even probably orchestrated the event for prices to dump down. Years ago, I don't remember what the, the, the event was, because we have so many every single year, but this was years ago, when people were looking through the actual numbers, and they saw just how much, I believe it was Cardano... Bitcoin and two other coins, how, how much uh, these coins had been accumulated or were simply owned by whales at this point. So it came up, I mean, huge, huge numbers. Like there was one address that had like 4%, another address had so-and-so, you name it, very high numbers. And then people get annoyed and they, they scream at the top of their lungs, centralization. And it's like, no, you, you were lied to and you sold. You're not upset with the people who lied to you and told you to sell. You're deep down inside upset with yourself because you sold your coins to these organizations. Remember a couple of months ago, this had to be summertime. I remember it being warm for some reason. When we heard that BlackRock was officially into crypto, like, they, they, like there was no more ambiguity. They stated they were into the cryptocurrency space. And I remember someone posting, and I showed you here as well, someone was posting on... Uh, Twitter, they said, don't sell your Bitcoin to BlackRock. And I think a lot of people didn't understand. I saw people uh, on the, you know, messaging, like, how do you do that? Like, how do I get the most for it? Like, not understanding what they meant. Uh, these institutions are in the space for the long term. This is why we keep seeing, regardless of how low prices go or how catastrophic and terrible and awful and horrible things are uh, within the prices, uh, they keep buying or they keep building or they keep saying that they're buying up companies because they know that at some point there will be possible uh, rebounds in price. But in the future, when they own everything, these are companies and institutions and banks and hedge funds that already own the world. I, I think people don't get the gravity of what that means. I, I, I think when you hear it, it almost sounds like a fairy tale. Even when I say it out loud, you think of the idea 
of someone owning the world being something along the lines of like King Midas or, 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 or someone like physically holding the earth in their hand and, and chuckling or laughing and throwing their head back maniacally. No, these people own everything. They own all the real estate. They own all the land. They own all the property. They're buying up all the fresh water on the planet. Look into it. It's 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 an actual thing. Their their companies are buying up land that has exclusively uh, fresh water sources, so that in ten to fifteen years, if you haven't been looking at what's been happening with water, uh, please look into it because you are going to be affected by it in some sort of way. To drag it on back, uh, yes, of course the whales have been buying because I have believed for years these are the people use usually orchestrating. Uh, the movements and price, not only behind the scenes, but in the front as well. They're the people behind who are telling everyone things are going to collapse, things look bad, things look absolutely terrible, get out of crypto, you can't do this so-and-so, and they also have the money to be able to accumulate um, anything that they want. So when you hear or I read that 66% of all Ether is owned by a very select hand few of people, you should be mortified. You should be terrified of the fact that lar- larger entities are constantly getting smaller people to sell off their coins, and they're buying all of it. I, I said it at the beginning of this year, and I'll say it again now. What happens when we get to the point where Ether is worth $55,000 per coin and Bitcoin's at a million dollars per coin? Who owns all the Bitcoin? The people who already own all the houses in the Hamptons, who own all the land in Manhattan, who own huge amounts of property in Miami. It's the same thing over and over again. Crypto's not meant for them. It's meant for everyone else to have a fighting chance in the world as well. But history has once again rhymed, rhythmed, and repeated itself. And this is where we always are. So... That's now. They own 66% of all the Ether now. And remember, the only way to create Ether is by owning Ether. So that's the Ethereum whale news. Also, in relatively popular news as well, this kept on popping up. So I was like, clearly people are talking about it. Uh, The guy named Plan B has joined the uh, ridiculous... Um, price prediction bandwagon for where prices are about to go. He says that a 5,800% Bitcoin price rally is coming. He calls the current price a steal. I do believe that as well, not the 5,800%, but clearly prices are being depressed and pushed down on purpose for whales to buy them. We have enough accurate whale news that whales are definitely buying what have you. Uh, He has, uh, I'll I'll go through this one quickly. He has a chart called the stock to flow chart, and it has different uh, (coughs) metrics on it. I can't really explain it. He has different charts based on different metrics, and they all deal in stock to flow. And he says that the chart that showed Bitcoin uh, topping out at 55,000 when we topped out at $70,000 appears to be the one that's in play. Uh, i.e. the different charts were showing different numbers for Bitcoin. One showed Bitcoin going to 100,000 last rally. One showed 150,000. One showed, I think, 39,000. And one showed 55,000. He says he thinks the one that showed 55,000 is the one that's currently playing out. And he believes uh, relatively soon, if not sometime next year, pre-having, at the having, what have you, uh, that we should be seeing a anywhere he said anywhere from a one hundred thousand to a one million dollar Bitcoin price. I mean, I always appreciate the optimism. I am a glass half full kind of guy. I remember a a teacher told me that when I was a kid, we had to. It was it's weird that it's the the memories that stick in your head. It's very very odd. I remember being a child. I was no more than five, six, seven years old, somewhere around there. And the teacher gave us a task to like talk about something or make a story or like respond back to her with something along the lines of that. And she gave everyone like a, a <laughs> it was so weird. Why do people do this? She gave us like a card and they were flipped face down. So we couldn't look at them based on our answers. And then we flipped them face up. And I remember mine said glass half full. And I didn't understand what that meant. And she was like, you're a very optimistic person and you probably will always be this way. And then the other half of the class 
the other half of the class had um, glass half empty, meaning they had a more negative stance on life. And she was like, you guys will probably have a lot of depression going on in your life. And I remember it's so it, – once again, it's weird the memories that stick in your head because I was like, oh, that's cool. I, you know, I have, I'm optimistic and yada, yada. And I remember growing up being like, so what happened to all the pessimistic kids? Like, I wonder if like, you know, this woman's wild prediction actually came true. Anyway, uh, you know, lack of sleep. Therefore, we're going to have an interesting video. Um, as always, of course, um, they want me to sign into their website to pay for news. And that's just not how, you know, my life is going to work out. Uh, it says the stock market is trapped in a clear downtrend and the situation could get worse. The worldwide news right now is that uh, things ain't looking good. It appears that the stock market uh, will not rally until we get explicit news from the Federal Reserve that they are stopping interest rate hikes. Even on the news that the next uh, rate hike may only be half of a percent, the stock market's not having it. We were warned at the beginning of this year, if the Fed continued with their practices, that we would be in this uh, current situation right now. And guess what? It's happening. Uh, everything is collapsing. We have a number of uh, countries who are already showing signs of a recession. But people are throwing around the D word now that we may enter a depression in 2023 if the Fed does not stop what they're doing. The issue is this uh, this event is not only affecting the Federal Reserve or the U.S. dollar. It's affecting billions of people around the world. Uh, at the moment, Asian stock markets are already down. Everything keeps falling. There are tons of problems everywhere. I don't have the energy to go into everything. Long story short, um, until we get a concrete answer that they are no longer raising interest rates and or have gotten inflation under control, we are going to continue to see the layoffs, the companies collapsing, the things in the cryptocurrency space falling, the prices dropping. I was looking at something yesterday and I looked at it this morning and I saw the price again and I was like, well, I'm glad I didn't buy yesterday because now it's even more of a bargain today. So the idea that we are either at the beginning of or entering into something recession-like is the, the, the thing that's in the echo chamber today. Everyone's talking about it. Everyone's looking for where markets are going to go next. And there seems to be no, um, is the word a reprieve? I don't think that's even the correct for that, sen for, for that sentence. Uh, remedy insight. As people were thinking, I, I, I watch sometimes what, what stock traders are saying, uh, like professional ones, not people online. Um, and they, were, they, they all believe that we were you know, ready for a movement back up as we were seeing the same exact thing or the same wording within the cryptocurrency space. And lo and behold, nope, everything keeps falling. There are a lot of people who are warning that the, the tech stock sector could also be facing a massive uh, collapse relatively soon as well. So, you know, that's fun. Yeah, that's all the price news, at least for right now. Cryptocurrency prices aren't even down by a lot. They're like weird uh, sideways down kind of thing. Some of them are even like in, you know, only down by 0.01%. But, you know, that's just a world right now. I, I wonder what's going to break this spell. Like, I wonder what will be the thing that kind of gets everyone back. But I, I find it nearly, and I'm not joking, I find it nearly criminal that the Fed is responsible for all of this. For the worldwide collapse in markets, I, it, it's, it's almost unbelievable that they've allowed our system to be set up this way and that we've been tracked, it, trapped in this chaotic cyclone for over a year now, more than a year now. Um, so at some point, the, the fever will break, but it is, um, yeah, that's all the price news. And yeah, let's move on. In, I guess, silver lining news, one of the most popular news stories of the day, Binance US is getting rid of trading fees for Ether. The company announced on Tuesday, expanding its zero-fee program beyond just Bitcoin. 
Free trading will apply to the following spot markets. They are ETH to the US dollar, ETH to Tether, and ETH to USD coin, as well as ETH to the Binance US dollar. The exchange will also offer additional trading fee discounts to customers <clears throat> who pay their trading fees with Binance coin tokens. That was already a given for those. The, the point of Binance coin is basically to use it and you get discounts on the website. This is why it's so popular because it works. Back in June, the exchange became the first U.S. crypto exchange platform to eliminate Bitcoin trading fees in an effort to attract more users. It said at the time it would do the same for more tokens in the future. By eliminating fee first on Bitcoin and now ETH, we are raising awareness for the high fees consuming. Consumers are paying on their platforms and hoping to restore trust in the greater ecosystem. <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? That, that It takes a lot more than just uh, lowering trading fees. So a lot of people seem to have thought that this was the bee's knees because a lot of people were talking about it. And I mean, it's cool. I, I think the only you know trading fees there should be is like actual fees on the Ethereum network, what have you. So uh, cool, nice doing something for the community in this sort of way. Uh, should this have been one of the most popular news stories? I don't think so. But people like weird news in the cryptocurrency space, so this just happened to be one of them. That's the Binance US is eliminating trading fees for Ethereum on their website news. Yeah. Let's move on. Also in this was very popular news. PayPal will be expanding its crypto services to Luxembourg in the coming days. The payment company said on Wednesday. In what may be its first foray into the European Union. Luxembourg, which hosts PayPal's EU headquarters, could serve as a gateway for the other 26 countries in the block, that is BLOC. Once the markets in crypto assets MICA regulation comes into effect, this regulatory regime should, in theory, but theory doesn't work on the planet anymore, give firms registered in any single member state a license to offer their services throughout the EU through a process known as passporting. Crypto exchanges Binance and Coinbase have taken this route in recent months, uh, getting uh, registered in Italy and in um, Ireland, which is also a part of the EU. So I believe at this point, I believe at this point, uh, PayPal has only had their crypto services within the United States. So now that they're launching this in Luxembourg, people in Europe are now excited that they're also going to be able to buy crypto through PayPal as well. Um, sure. Amazing. It's clear that paperwork takes a very long time to do anything. So yeah, finally got there. I assume after this, the next expansion will be somewhere in Southeast Asia. But I don't think PayPal is actually really used in many other places outside of the States and also like the States, Canada and Europe. I, I hear like a lot of other uh, payment option method places websites are usually in use more than they are PayPal. So cool. I assume by next Tuesday, Wednesday, I give it Thursday. If this has worked out. And they have officially launched in Luxembourg. We will hear if it has launched EU-wide at that point and how many other people are actually using their service. That's the PayPal is officially expanding into Luxembourg news. And yeah, let's move on. Also, in very popular news, there was a lot of this today. Um, we've had news about this over the course of the last like four or five days uh, consecutively, over and over and over. Uh, XRP is currently one of the very few coins that's actually up by 2%, while everything else is either down or down up. You know, like the little, not down by zero point, whatever. The point is, XRP is currently up right now. Apparently, a lot of the, the lawyers or legal counsel or people are talking about the court case online, on Twitter, on YouTube, and it appears as if people who have read through the documents um, are now claiming uh, that multiple times the SEC has tried to refile uh, for questioning or some type of opposition to the fact that X might have happened or XRP might be a security. But when looking through the files, it appears that the SEC has never had an answer i.e. 
Uh, imagine someone running into a room and saying, Cardano's a security, Cardano's a security. And you go, why? And they look at you with a blank stare for three months. And then you go, okay. And then they run out of the room. And then they come back and say, Cardano's a security. And you go, dude, dude, why? What happened? What's going on? And they once again have no answer. This appears to be what the SEC has been doing and why this has been such a prolonged um, lawsuit. It's now been over two years uh, that this fraudulent lawsuit has taken place. I wonder if Ripple will be able to actually sue the SEC after this. For those of you who missed it, they've Ripple has already paid over a hundred million dollars in in court fees. I would I would be more than a little angry. I think that is a dramatic understatement. Uh, so the the optimism once again is that apparently it looks like as if no one hold your breath because you know the world doesn't work out that way. Uh, that Ripple might have another leg up, hand up, something up, because uh, the SEC seems to be relatively incompetent and doesn't have any actual answers and is more concerned with actual corruption, them being corrupt in crypto, than actually helping anyone in the space. So, yeah, sure, why not? This was very, I mean, anytime that anything with Ripple or XRP is in the news, uh, it always ends up being popular. But now a lot of people are, you know, gaining. Uh, more optimism because both parties, I believe, have filed for a summary judgment, basically asking the, the 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 judge, "Hey, let's get this over with. What's your judgment?" So we should, by all means, by January, be hearing some type of an answer from the judge as to uh, what the answer is. Um, if Ripple wins, the entire market skyrockets immediately. Uh, if Ripple loses, the entire market collapses because that gives the SEC a gigantic precedence to say uh, what is definitely and what is not then a security. So once again, I don't care if you hate Ripple or not, you better be crossing your fingers because you might think your coin is immune to the SEC. They're going after one of the largest players in the game on purpose because if they can convince the, 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 the judge that XRP is, is a security, everything else goes down, like literally everything else collapses. You think I'm lying. I've been here a very long time. That's the XRP lawsuit news. Quite popular. M moving along. Also, in completely unsurprising uh, popular news, I, I scrolled by it once. I scrolled by it nine times, and I kept on seeing it everywhere. For those of you who don't know, it's a very dark and sad day. I am very sad to announce uh, that Elon Musk is no longer the richest person on the planet. I know, I know, yeah, it, it, it pains me as well. I shed thousands of tears as I, as, as I thought about a, a billionaire not being the richest billionaire anymore. So it basically happened because uh, Tesla's stock price has been falling because no one's really buying Teslas anymore because also people are broke and people don't have the the money to be able to splurge like that anymore. Uh, also, for those of you who are true believers, I'm not sure if you've been seeing uh, the news of how many Teslas uh, kind of uh, stop suddenly as they're driving and how many of them have... Uh, the word starts with an E and ends with an explosion. Uh, how many of them have been spontaneously combusting? So a lot of people have been backing away from Teslas over the course of the last... Two years, and also the forty-four billion dollars <throat> in debt on a uh, collapsing Twitter have also made him lose his top position. But fear not; I mean, he's only like I think two or three billion away for becoming the richest person on the planet again. And the the current uh, richest person is the person who owns um, uh, LVMH, Louis, uh, Louis Vuitton, good job. Louis Vuitton and a bunch of other like fashion brands because, you know, sure, why not? So this was incredibly popular news. I, I chuckled more times than I should have on seeing the news that people were almost in mourning uh, for the fact that their favorite superhero was no longer the rich. I mean, you would not believe, like if you get a chance... Uh, Google it or search engine it. Type in uh, Elon Musk no longer richest man. You are going to find thousands of articles. I wish I understood why people worship him, but alas, here we are. So that's also, once again, this isn't, this isn't crypto news. 
But you notice how like that kind of news keeps making it into crypto news because that's just where we are as a society. All right. Moving along. Also in the news, um, people are now talking about that they're going to subpoena um, Sam Bankman Freed if he does not voluntarily testify. Uh, and they, they they keep posting photos like this where he seems like he's in shock, but I'm pretty sure he was just mid-speech. Uh, so basically, for those of you who missed yesterday's video, um, people want him to stand before the Senate and in, in front of Congress to basically discuss what happened with FTX, why it collapsed, about Alameda, about all these other things. And he basically, I think, announced, I'll do it if I want to. And they're thinking of trying to force him to do it. He's going to do it. I mean, I don't know what planet people live on. I know I keep saying that, but I don't understand the stupidity in the world anymore. Like, I just, I simply don't, don't get it. So, sure, just do it. Just subpoena him. Uh, he, he admitted 12 times before when he was doing interviews that he did something wrong or something was fraudulent or he wished he hadn't done what he did. So, he clearly, allegedly did something because he said it 12 times. So... Just subpoena him, get him in front of the entire committee, get him to talk so that everyone can finally uh, be more annoyed at the fact that he actually is there and he's not saying what they want him to say. And also in, I wasn't eating anything, but I choked on my food as I saw this. In what might be one of the most disgusting and despicable things that I've ever seen in my entire life, Do Kwan... That is D-O space K-W-O-N, the guy who caused the collapse of Terra Luna. Remember that guy? Yeah, remember I told you these events keep happening over and over. Remember how terrible Terra Luna was and everyone was up in arms and how despicable this man was. And then he disappeared and people couldn't find him and people were trying to look for him around the world. Remember that? Remember that whole situation? He has now come out and announced... <clears throat> That Sam Bankman-Fried is to blame for the Terra Luna collapse. If you believe this, you are one of the dumbest people on this planet. There's no way for me. I cannot say it any other way. I can't sugarcoat it. I can't marmalade coat it. I can't even give you a cup of molasses. I can't give you anything. This man is trying to deflect from the fact that he literally caused an entire coin ecosystem to collapse himself. He did it. It was Do Kwan. He tried explaining why the collapse of Genesis happened a couple of days ago, and he said he now believes that it was also the cause of the collapse of Terra Luna. Do you know why he's saying this? He's trying to deflect from the fact that he did it, that he caused the collapse, that he's been running from authorities for months. However, if you can convince enough stupid people that, yeah, it sounds realistic, of course it was Sam Bankman Freed, then Do Kwan is once again off the hook. Do you remember two weeks ago, Do Kwan announced that he's trying to raise money for another cryptocurrency project, and I'm pretty sure people are going to give him money for it. When will you realize that these people don't care about you or the space, that they're just trying to fraud you over and over so that they can keep making more and more money? How, how many times do you need to be backhanded before you realize that something is wrong and people are lying to you? This, on the screen, was the most popular news story of the day. This even, this even pushed out the entire Elon Musk news. Because there are a lot of people who are now saying, yeah, I believe it. It was definitely Sam Bankman-Fried who did it. If you believe this, leave crypto right now. This space is not for you. Reality is not your best friend. Because all that means is that every other thing that we've seen this year, Celsius, BlockFi, every other collapse, I mean, why not blame everything on Sam Bankman-Fried? He's clearly a mastermind. For those of you who missed the news yesterday, there were hundreds of articles I don't, and, hun, and, and tons of rich people. That was the kicker for me. It wasn't just the articles, it was also these wealthy, wealthy, wealthy liars who all came forward and were all announcing that Sam Bankman-Fried was some type of a genius, that he was some kind of, they, they used the word mastermind. 
that he was the one and the reason for the cause of the entire cryptocurrency space. He was the worst thing ever. He was the Enron. He's the Lehman Brothers. Someone even, someone even equated what he did to to what's it called Black Monday or you know Black Monday in 1987. And I'm like, you guys are terrible, terrible, terrible human beings. And these people are also the people who are trying to terrify you to sell so that they can buy more cryptocurrencies. I do not believe that Sam Bankman Freed was the cause of the Terra Luna collapse. Do you want to know why? Because I, probably over the course of nine months, someone would have looked into it and realized that it was Sam Bankman Freed. Isn't it weird that no one mentioned Sam Bankman Freed as Do Kwan was hiding around the world? No one at any point? The space is ridiculous. And I don't think it's going to change. I actually only think it's going to get more corrosive as time goes on. The more, the more, it, it, it'll work both ways. The more losses people have, the more money they lose, the more toxic people in the space will become. It happens every single time. The more money people make, the higher the market goes and the greedier people get, the more willing they're going to be uh, to pushing people under buses to be able to make more money. Um, it's disgusting. The, 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 the cryptocurrency space has completely lost its mind. Um, and all it took was Sam Bankman freed, you know, collapsing every single company and every other coin as you know, the mastermind genius. This man's an idiot as well. Like if, watch his interviews. That's the, um, Do Kwan says that Sam Bankman freed started the Genesis and Terra Luna collapse news. Let's move on. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Martin Steuer, Body McBoatface, Sam Ratter, Dotha Diddy, Manny Cryptos, Crypto Gambino, Auspicious, Agile and Blockchain, Jamie Saad, and let's move on, Empire Queen, Roman Geba, Bitcoin Ben Arachno, Dave, The Dealer's Den, Captain Something in the Z-Way, Lay Mo, Barazi, VB Nerd, 21, Lauren De Silva, Quoted Biddy, Troy, All Good, Space Case, Need a Miracle, Pat Ternoster, Navarro, Williams, Utopia 569, Moon Man, High XRP, Nose, Thromo, John Sarson, Yana, Marita, Bilbiophobia, Adam Grace, Wise Knight, Owl, 242 to the World, Bank Row Network, Crypto Artist, Cold U3D, Setsuna, Paxis, Jim Gardner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Yes to Crypto, Anytime Fitness, Monks Corner Staff, Bake Me a Cake, Tigger, Macho Nisa, and on Crypto with Lionel. Thank you all very, very much for your support. Thank you to everyone who left a like, a comment, or has subscribed. I think I did pretty well for like th what a couple of hours worth of sleep. I think I did exceptionally well in this video. I know I sound tired. Like I I I can't help it. There's nothing <laughs> there's nothing in my body that is going to be giving me any extra energy right now. At the moment, Bitcoin is up by 0.02%. It is at $16,820. Ethereum is currently up by half of a percentile point. You see all the, uh, what do you call this? Volatility that's been taking place. There's a lot of manipulation that's been happening in this market. People are desperately trying to get prices to go down. I'm not sure exactly how low they're trying to get it to go, but definitely something is afoot. XRP is up by 1.6%. It was up by 2 but alas, it looks like Bitcoin might be falling again. Has anything bucked the trend? Not really. Everything is... Monero is up by almost 2%. Sure, why not? Everything is up or down roughly between 2 and 4%. EOS is up by 4%. Makes no sense on, on any planet as to why that coin is moving. Terra Luna Classic is up... <laughs> Is up by three point three percent. I'm tr I'm trying to I'm I'm praying that that coin is not up because people were like Do Quan makes sense, <sighs> but but I, but I know the truth. Um, yeah, I hope that you've all enjoyed. I hope your day goes good, goes well, goes awesome, goes amazing. I hope your boss is not at work. I hope you get to loaf around and leave work early. I hope you find money on the street. I hope good fortune comes your way. I hope for some reason your office is closed for the rest of the week and you can simply go back home and go to sleep. Life is very stressful for everybody right now, it seems. So I just really hope that you all have, and I mean a fantastic freaking day. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.